What is the second most important thing when it comes to sending lead downrange accurately? Yep, it's the optic. If this don't work, you ain't gonna hit anything. There are now so many choices of optic on the market, everyone is having a go making and marketing one. And in this video, I'm going to look at what seems to be the most popular from the past 12 months, the Element Helix in second focal plane and first focal plane. There has been an explosion of everyone getting into the scope market. No, really, everyone is having a go. I remember when the choice was Hawk. That was it. Shoot an air gun, it will possibly have a Hawk on top. Well, not anymore. That bird has flown the nest. Flights to China got cheaper and people went. Some just went down the Alibaba route. But those that got on the plane and went told the factories what they needed and what was expected. That is exactly what the Element Optics team did. They travelled, worked on designs, and showed what was required, and wanted the best they could get. Very much like some bigger and well-known brands do. And that's why they offer a lifetime platinum warranty, and why some of the most popular YouTubers have got behind the project, along with one of the biggest air gun companies in the world, FX Air Guns. So Element Optics are not an Alibaba special with a different label on depending who has bought the scope batch this month. And their selling point is without doubt not free scope mounts. These test scopes come courtesy of Airgun 101 shop in the UK, my shop. And loads more reviews can be found on airgun101.com. In fact, if you need to check out any reviews for anything Airgun when you Google it, just put in Airgun 101 after the search text. Save yourself some time, get some trusted reviews, and just 101 it. So what have we got? What does the manufacturer's blurb say on these? Both the second focal plane and first focal plane features are, and yes, I am reading this off some paper, 30 mil main body tube, compact, lightweight design, Aircraft grade aluminium, side parallax, 10 yards to infinity, fully multi-coated lenses, tool-free resettable turrets with 6 MRAD or 15 MOA per revolution, a hard mechanical zero stop, removable magnification throw lever, waterproof, fogproof, shockproof and nitrogen purged, sunshade, lens cloth and rubber lens cap included, rated and tested up to 50 cal, usable on rifles, PCPs, and springers. Plus, and here is something over and above your Alibaba specials, the internals are made of stainless steel, so they should be resistant to wear and tear over time. No point of aim shifting. Yes, it's all about clicks, and you will feel the difference with a Helix. Have you ever wondered why? with your bargain basement scope when you zeroed at 30, dialed to 50, and then dialed back to 30, and it's all off? Well, that's your Alibaba special doing its thing for you right there. Mushy internals. There is nothing mushy about the adjustments on the Helix. The magnification ring, fast eye focus ring, and turrets are very tactile and easy to use. And with cold fingers, that throw lever is a welcome addition. The Element Helix comes in first focal plane and second focal plane. So the calibration for the second focal plane is at 6 power, 12 power and 24 power. First focal stays the same on all magnifications. I have to hold my hands up, I have never been a scope person. I'm no good at maths. Never understood the difference or the fuss. But after getting into competition shooting and being shown what I should actually be doing, and learning how dialing a scope can make you more accurate, I now rate a quality scope as super important. Yep, these come at a cost. You're basically handing over the cash for a spring air gun, but it really does help. You need to know that when you're turning these dials, it creates a repetitive action, and you can be ensured it goes back to where you started and where you went to. I've been using the Helix scopes now for around eight months and they all still work absolutely fine. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the requirement. Works well for video work, hunting, and it's great because it easily attaches night vision stuff to it as well. 
The Helix comes in MRAD and MOA, and the second Focor have clean reticules, and the first Focor comes with a dirty Christmas tree style reticule. More aim points. I'll put a link to an explanation of what MOA and MRAD is in the box below. Basically, it's maths, and I am not good at maths. So what is the difference between second focal plane and first? Firstly, the reticule on the second focal plane stays fixed. The first focal plane gets bigger and smaller when you zoom at the back. Basically, the reticule, which is the crosshair bit that you see, is mounted in two different ways. In the first focal plane, it's at the front, somewhere here, and it moves from front to back when you turn the magnification ring. On a second focal plane scope, it's fixed somewhere at the rear. And when you turn the magnification ring on a second focal plane, only the lens moves. So first focal plane is normally more expensive as the movement is more involved inside and the reticule has to line and stack up numbers wise wherever it is. So when you use a second focal plane, depending on your magnification, that varies the clicks on the turret when dialing, hence why the second focal plane is calibrated at certain points. And the first focal plane is not. It always stays the same numbers wise, no matter what power you shoot it on. I've done basic box tests on targets at 50 and 100 yards with both second and first focal. Both will dial back to within the 15 millimeter target center each time. Now this is how I'm actually doing the test. I'm lay on the table and my weight is actually helping the table stay sturdy. Uh, I don't have a concrete bench, I don't have a professional range or anything like that to do this on. So this is the best I can come up with. But what I can tell you is that when I do get started and I get my turret on zero each time quickly to start the test, is that when I do dial round, those little mil. dots out there that I'm dialing to and from are 15 mil in diameter. And the scope will go out all the way around and back down and back into that 15 mil diameter dot. There you go. M my weight is clearly at this point saving the day on the table. The zoom and parallax are excellent and the parallax is one of the most accurate I have used in the price range. Plus those turrets are a joy to turn. Clarity is really good at 100, 50 and 25 yards. And I would say that the 24 power is too much power at 25 yards, so back it off a bit. But it will still parallax and give a clear image. And yes, that ranging on that parallax, as I've said, goes from 10 yards to infinity. The first focal reticule does get small and very fine at six power. I would say you're going to use this at around 12 and above. That is nothing unusual with a first focal plane. Reticules go from small and fine to big. 12 and above for me works a treat. It does miss the illuminated reticule and others do have it for the price, but you have to go up to the Titan in the range to get that. None of the element scopes currently come with a big parallax wheel on the side, which is kind of a shame because that parallax is really super accurate. And with a big parallax wheel, you could probably go to town and field target with this scope. So yes, maybe in the future, a big parallax wheel. I've never used the extended sun shader that gets included. Maybe that's because England is so damn wet all the time. There really is a noticeable quality difference in the fit and finish and the glass, which I have to point out is very good. Now, whoever is putting the glass in these scopes is going to get fired because they've been putting in what seems to be glass from much better scopes. No more fog or mist. It's clear and very easy to see through. Look, it's a love-hate thing. Some swear by the first focal plane and some swear by the second focal plane. People like the fixed reticule size of the second focal plane, but don't like the map. So they go for the first focal plane. And some don't like the first focal plane because the reticule can go from very small to very large and love math. So they may go with the second focal plane. This is not a which should you choose video. The question here is, are they any good? No, really. All the fuss and all the promotion, are they worth it? Well, the answer is yes. Is the Element Helix a two grand scope for one fifth the money? Nope. 
It's a really good scope for the money. It's everything you would expect, and it has already forced others to move the goalposts and improve. So even if you hate the whole YouTube element promotion thing, just remember, they have probably made others do better and offer more for your money. And no, it doesn't come with free scope mounts to make you buy it. If you've enjoyed and found the video useful, please like and subscribe and please visit airgun101.com. Other than that, stay well, cheerio, and yes, I am gonna put some oil on the creaky chair.